good evening, everyone. I'm glad you were, you're able to, to join me yet again for our evening reflection on the Lord's Day. We're getting through the, the summer with the usual miscellany of weather, you know, one minute scorching heat, the next minute driving, driving rain. That's the way we, we normally have it. But uh, I hope that there's been some time for you over this period to relax and take in some of the, the wonders of God's creation, which we see around us. We actually managed to get up to Calendar on Monday, which is one of my favourite places, actually. People kind of, um, you know, screw up their noses a wee bit when I, whenever I say that. But I think it's because when I was a wee boy, um, I remember on three occasions going on a mystery tour, um, organised by the, by the church. And on every occasion it went to calendar. So whenever I think of uh, mystery tours, it's always a mystery tour to, to calendar. But we had a nice day sitting by the river and just looking at the, the calm surface, sometimes broken by a, a fish rising. And of course the greenery round about, the trees and, and everything, it was, it was very special. So I hope you've had moments like that during the, the summer time to enable us to, to gird up for the experience of the winter, um, whatever that brings, whatever that brings to us. But before we have a reflection together, we'll join in prayer, let's pray. Our Father, we, we give thanks to you for all the changing seasons and for all the distinctive things that they bring to our experience. And we thank you for this time when we see your creation in all its magnificence, its colour, its variety, its fragrance, its quietness and also its disturbance. We thank you for all of it and for what it tells us about your character. Because we stand before our favourite scenes and we know something deep within us which can only be your love. And we thank you that we have this great promise at the heart of the Christian faith that in a sense we haven't seen anything yet because there is this great vision you've placed before us of a renewed creation where there is nothing in conflict, where there is nothing that becomes decayed, where there is nothing that ever causes pain, that that is your purpose for your creation. And you will create a new people to inhabit and appreciate everything that, that you have done. So we pray that something of that renewing influence would touch us in the depths tonight as we come to the end of of this lord's day and as we contemplate another week in your service and we pray this in jesus name amen well folks i've had a couple of weeks off um, and uh, there's been quite a lot up for us to do as we prepare for retirement and for removal from Mogai after 34 years, so it's quite a, quite a thought. But it was good to have some time off and I always look forward to being able to attend church as a consumer um, rather than somebody who is uh, centre stage. And we had a lovely time at two congregations within the Clyde Presbytery Erskine Parish Church and also Renfrew Trinity. And in both these places, what a joy it was to be welcomed very warmly by the, the people in both these places to join together with their worship, which was, was deeply personal and to benefit from some really fine preaching from both the, the ministers in these places. We came out feeling that we'd been touched by the renewing power of God's 
Holy Spirit. But it's just good, you know, even when I'm away from my own church family, it's just good to feel that you're still part of a, a community, a community of God's people, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, binding people together. And we've experienced this in many places throughout the, the world. Uh, when we were in America and in Spain and Portugal um, and England, I have to mention England, that's where two thirds of uh, the family stay, not to mention my daughter-in-law and the two grandchildren. We've always find, found places where we've been very warmly welcomed and where we've benefited from the worship, being part of, of God's people and being fed by his word. And that's very much what's at the heart of, of being a Christian. Look back right to the very beginning of the, the Bible and you don't find people who could be described as a one-man band, as, as solo acts. They're all part of, of a community. During the the next few weeks in our worship in St. Paul's, I'm going to be looking at some important figures in the Old Testament. And when you when you think of them, you know, people like Moses, people like Joshua, people like Samuel, Jeremiah, all the, the other prophets, yes, they were individuals and they were strong individuals. They were gifted and they made a unique contribution to their nation. But they were very much part of the nation. They emerged from the nation of Israel and they engaged in their work within the, the context of that nation. They were never entirely on their own. They were part of, of a community. And you go into the New Testament and, it, and it's the same there. Just thinking about the beginning of Mark's gospel, just recently and when when you look at the beginning you know Jesus could be said to be a solitary figure in some ways we see him being baptized we see him going into the, the wilderness where he comes under pressure from Satan and he's walking along the the shore of the sea of Galilee on his own but that doesn't last for for too long because he gathers to him, this group of people, Simon and Andrew, James and, and John, the, the first of the disciples to be called, and that grew to be the, the 12 disciples, and that would grow again to be the 72 that we hear about in, in Luke's gospel, that Jesus sent out on a mission. So Jesus was always part of a community, and, and it's interesting. Uh, again, thinking about Luke's gospel, that we are told quite clearly that he, on one particular Lord, on uh, one particular Sabbath rather, he went to the synagogue as was his custom. It was part of Jesus' experience to be part of, of uh, a people. And that always has to be at the heart of our. Uh, Christian lives. I mean, think of this season of Pentecost in which our minds go back to the, the very early days of the, the, the church's life and witness and, and mission. And you, th you think of that day when the Holy Spirit came down upon a people, not on individuals scattered throughout the place, but a people who were gathered together, quite possibly on the Lord's day, gathered for worship, and the Spirit comes down and, <coughs> and equips them for that mission that's going to turn the world upside down. You know, it's quite clear from the teaching in the New Testament that the Spirit brings power, but he also brings gifts, which when they're exercised, strengthen the church and enable the church to to look to to look out on the world and to gather more and more people to serve the Lord Jesus. Every one of us given a gift to strengthen 
the, the togetherness, the unity, um, the, the harmony of the church. And it's very interesting. I mean, that sometimes we, we become too familiar with images in the Bible and with teaching in the Bible. But think for a minute of, of how Paul would often describe the church. He described the church as the body of Christ, not just in its physical presence, but in its very being. We think of a body, a body as a living organism. And that is the way that Paul thought of the church, not as a club, not as a, an institution, not as a society of, 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 of some kind, but as a body a living organism which bore witness to the presence of Christ in the world, but also the power of Christ in the world. That's why you know, I always like to, to describe the church as a movement of people. You know, not something that's static, not something that's that that um, that never develops, never grows, but a movement of, of, of people, a people who are committed to, to bearing witness to, to living truths, to bearing witness to the love of God, which is always present in the world, no matter what the, the, the circumstances. A movement of people carrying truth, carrying values that can only have God as their source and ultimately revealing Christ to the world. It's one of those things that I always pray for our own churches in St Paul's and in Bodernock, that whenever people come amongst us, they have a sense of that living witness that exists amongst a people. I and Gabriel, we, we experienced something of that in the past two Sundays when we were in these two churches I mentioned at the beginning. A sense of acceptance, a sense that people were glad that we were there and that led to a real sense of of, of blessing. And it's my hope and, and prayer that for every congregation of God's people, wherever people bear the name of Jesus, they will be touched by that living reality of his power, his peace, and his love. Let's pray. God our Father, we Give thanks to you that you have given us the gift of your church, a place where we gather together with those who love the Lord Jesus, a place where we receive blessing through worship, a place where we are in contact with your truth as your word is preached to us, a place where we can be assured of the forgiveness of sins and the presence of your Holy Spirit with us in every circumstance that we might find ourselves. Lord, we pray that wherever there is a church, that all of this would be a reality. I mean, thank you that it's possible for us to make a contribution to the witness of your church. You've promised us that we are, are given gifts which, when we exercise them, can strengthen the church, can enable the church to be more fit to reach out to others who need to know the story of Jesus. We thank you for this, and we thank you for the blessings that the church has brought us in the past, and we pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless us through the fellowship that is created by your spirit through the lives of men and women like us who are seeking to follow 
in the ways of Christ. We pray tonight, Lord, for churches throughout the world that are under pressure because they're not welcome in their countries. And we pray that they would sustain their witness, that they would be kept safe, and that they would experience more and more freedom. We pray also, Lord, for those parts of the world where it's difficult for Christians to bear witness in the, in the face of war, in the face of famine, in the face of other natural disasters. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen all your people in the midst of difficult days. And we pray our personal prayers tonight, Lord, because we know people who are having a difficult time at present because of ill health, because of pain, because of difficult relationships which are hard to, to mend, because of bereavement. And many of us have families who are scattered, not only throughout the UK, but throughout the world. And our hearts go out to them in this moment and pray, Lord, that you would sustain them and keep them in your loving focus. And Lord, we ask that in the week ahead, we would have a sense of your presence with us, that you would open up opportunities for service for us, and that you would keep us faithful as we seek to be true to the call that we have in Christ. And we pray all of this in his name. Amen. Amen.